Welcome to Going Carnivore in Thailand. Now, I want to thank my user 604 Nation because they had asked the question on a previous video, how did you go from 190 to 380 pounds? What was the story? Well, that got me thinking, and I decided to work on reconstructing my memory over time on all the trials and tribulations, along with some associated stories of what transpired from 1977 when I was 22 years old to present day. So let's get to it with this episode. Welcome back to the frog here. Well, I've been telling you a story about how did I go from a 34-inch waist to a 64-inch waist or more? Well, it wasn't easy, but as time progresses, we're now in around 1994. And I got a new push on to lose weight. Now, one of the things I really went to was high-protein protein shakes and I was playing some pool at the time so I used to remember that I would take and make up protein meal replacement shakes make them up in the blender put them in a, in a thermos jug one of them glass ones sort of jug like this with a lid on it. I would make those up. And I would take them to the pool room with me. And one of the things I was also doing was, because you got to figure, 1994, I'm 39 years old, and I'm doing a lot of exercise. I mean, I'm literally doing things I've never done before, like rollerblading and going out for walks, four miles, five mile walks. And I was doing really good. I was actually losing some weight and stuff. And uh, one of the things I used to do was gamble playing pool. And I had a big setback when some guy that I was gambling with who lost money attacked me from behind with the back of a pool cue. And he swung it from behind me and caught me in the mouth and knocked out a few teeth. And uh, he was... He was way older than I was. I was 39. He was probably in his 70s. And I came to find out later that he actually had cancer. And he lost his mind. Now, I had played pool with this guy for years. Many years. Most of the times, he ended up playing better than I did, and I ended up losing money and graciously paying him every time. Well, this time, I guess he was off his game, and I beat him out of a few hundred dollars, and he attacked me. Well, that ended up costing me over 40 hours in the dentist chair, and thousands of dollars worth of dental bills, he ended up getting months in actual county jail for assault, which I made it my purpose in life to see he got maximum sentence. And I really didn't care. I don't really know the whole story about whether or not where he was when he died, whether he was still in jail or not. Didn't care. But, mentally, it knocked me off my game. Stopped exercising, stopped caring about what I was eating. Uh, I don't know what you want to call it. 
but it, it really hurt me mentally and physically but mentally you know it took took all that drive away from me i mean i was doing good i was exercising i was doing a lot of high protein i was staying away from carbs uh i believe it was low carbs not no carbs but i was eating you know i was still eating it wrong because i remember i was trying to do high protein low fat low carbs and exercise and i had lost some weight i had pulled back a little bit maybe lost two inches maybe three inches off my waist i was getting down there and then that happened to me that was a bad time but these are things in life that set you back with me it was a criminal act cowardly criminal act curly may you be rotting deep in hell where you belong if there is a hell i hope they saved an extra hot spot for you now some people yeah it's really bad how some people talk some people who weren't there said Oh, it was probably my fault. I probably egged him on or something like that. It wasn't. And and I actually liked the guy before this. I mean, he was a character. But, eh, yeah. Well, what I want to caution here is to everybody out there. Things come up in, in life that knock you off your seat, that knock you off your feet, that land you on your head, that make you wish you were dead. Things come up like that. To some people, it may be losing someone they love. It may be that their mom or dad passed away or their brother passed away or their sister passed away. It could be getting fired from a job. It could be a son or a daughter who turned out to be an idiot. Lots of things in life will knock you off your feet. And unfortunately, these things can also knock you off your plan to make yourself a better person, physically and mentally. I don't have any wisdom to tell you how to fight that. I was unsuccessful at fighting it myself. Perhaps it would have helped if I had somebody a little older and a little wiser to advise me, like a father or a father figure. And my closest thing to that was my best friend Tim at the time. And he had been killed three, three years earlier in a tragic, unexpected boating accident. So I didn't have anybody to talk to, so not anybody with any wisdom that would sit me down and tell you what I'm saying right now. So if you're going through trials in your life, if you're on a carnivore quest, if you're on a physical fitness quest, if you're out there watching me and you're out there and you've, you've got a plan, and every day you're trying to execute the plan. And then something happens to take your mind and make you want to just say, screw it, I just want to sit here and be sorry. 
I just want to sit here and feel bad. Or I'm, I'm feeling so bad, I just don't want to get up and do what I was doing before. Hell with the plan. I don't know what else to tell you, but looking back over the last 30 years, back to 1994, I wish to hell somebody would have said this to me. That the plan's working, stay to the plan. Do what you can to live your best life. Remember what I've always said about my goal for success was doing what you want, when you want, and how you want. You are a success. And that can be anything not to do with money. Could be able to have the time to go take that walk because you want to. And now we get to doing what you want. And when your mind gets zapped into a fog because something in life came and kicked you off your feet and you hit your head, it's time to look back and Listen to a friend, talk with a friend, someone that you know and you respect has the experience in life to have went through something similar. And I'm going to leave with you a bit of wisdom that I've picked up over the years about problems. If you think you've got a problem today, if you go to your mailbox and you open your mailbox and you get a letter in it from the Internal Revenue Service saying, we want to audit your tax returns for the last four years, don't go nuts over it. First thing you do is you ask yourself the following question. Five years from now, how will going through this problem be remembered or felt? And if you look yourself in the eye, look yourself in the mirror and say, five years from now, will this still be a problem or will this just be another experience? Remember, experience is what you get when you don't get what you want. And if you say five years from now, that audit would be over. Whatever it turns out will have turned out. It'll be water under the bridge, and I won't be worrying about it then. There's no sense letting that problem consume you. Yes, you have to address your problems. You have to hit your problems head on. But if you've got a problem that you say five years from now, it won't matter. Five years from now, It'll be water under the bridge. You opened up your mailbox and you got a bill from some bill collector that says, you owe X number of dollars. Please pay up. And it sends you into shock. You don't have the money to pay. Well, sit yourself down and say, what's the worst that's going to happen? And five years from now, will it really make any kind of a difference in my life? I'll deal with it. Well, when I got attacked, it knocked me off my feet. I hit my head and a fog enveloped in my head that took me off my game plan and I gained a lot of weight back. 
because I stopped walking, I stopped exercising, I stopped going to the Y's in the morning. I stopped rollerblading, all that stuff I was doing. Just anything to be out and trying to exercise. And uh, let me tell you, in my opinion, Exercise is good, it helps, but I see a lot of people, and I've been one of them, that if you, you can exercise till you're blue in the face, but if you're putting the wrong shit in your body, it isn't going to make a difference. Now, I was with a woman for a very long time who wanted to quit smoking. She did. She quit. But she started gaining weight, and she didn't like that. When she quit, she started gaining weight. She ate like a bird. She went to the gym every, almost every day, five days a week. She was trying to exercise. She was bound to determined to exercise that weight away. And it wasn't working. What she wasn't doing is she was eating like a bird and she was never, she was starving herself, which was not putting in the nutrients she needed. And her body was still storing that fat because it was used to burning those cigarettes every day. So what happened? The exercise didn't work. It knocked her off her feet. Poof. She hit her head and put fog in her head, she went back and started smoking cigarettes. Smoked cigarettes then for the rest of her life. And she told me more than once, I'd rather die from cigarettes than I would carry around extra weight. Which is a hell of a thing to tell a fat guy, by the way. Yeah, I'd rather be smoking cigarettes and dead than be fat. And you're sitting there with four or five extra belt sizes on you when she says it. And she meant it. By the way, cancer killed her. Not just one kind of cancer, but both breast cancer and pancreatic cancer. So if you're smoking cigarettes and you haven't found a way to quit and you still think you got some life left in you, all I can say is I'm not sure it's worth it. Because Pancreatic cancer is nothing to mess with. Now, everybody th would say, well, if cigarettes caused it, it'd be lung cancer. Well, I don't believe it has to be lung cancer. But what you're putting in your body, if your body don't like it, it can hurt. So, I'm doing the best I can to put good things in my body. That's all, folks.